Okay, for the third part of our lecture series today, we're looking at Schmidt chapters 10, or chapter 10, which is looking at adverb clauses and adverb phrases. Finally, we can pass it. So we're going to begin with the overview of different types of connectors. So my first question to you is, are there any differences oops, between the three sentences? What is the difference, difference between the sentences? So number one, as the professor wrote on the board, the students were taking notes. Number two, the professor wrote on the board, semicolon, meanwhile, comma, the students were taking notes. Number three, the professor wrote on the board, period, at the same time, comma, the students were taking notes. So is there any difference in meaning? And number two, what is the difference between the sentences? So the meaning is the same. All three sentences have the same meaning. The difference is in the kind of sentence. So number one is a sentence made up of an independent clause and a dependent or subordinate clause, beginning with as. So you see the dependent clause in number one starts the sentence, as the professor wrote on the board, comma. And then we have an independent clause, the students were taking notes. In example, example number two is a compound sentence made up of two independent clauses connected with a conjunction, the conjunction being, in this case, meanwhile. So notice the punctuation here. We have semicolon, meanwhile, comma. In this case, we have two independent clauses. And when you have two independent clauses connected by a transition word, we use the punctuation semicolon, transition word, comma, to connect two independent clauses. Number three is two simple sentences. The second sentence is introduced with a transition phrase at the same time. So you have two independent sentences or clauses. The professor wrote on the board, period, at the same time, comma, the students were taking notes. However, the meaning in all three sentences is the same. Notice that subordinating conjunctions connect subordinate clauses to independent clauses. So words like because, since are subordinating conjunctions. Those connect dependent clauses to independent clauses. Pay attention because when the subordinating clause comes second, there is no comma. If the subordinating clause comes first, there is a comma after the subordinating clause. Therefore, when you have a clause that begins with because, there will not be a comma before the word because if the subordinating clause comes second. If it comes first, then there is a comma after the clause. Coordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs connect independent clauses. Transitions introduce simple sentences. Notice the difference in punctuation. So when we have transition words, we have that um, punctuation that I noted before in the sentence with meanwhile, where we have a semicolon Semicolons are used to separate two independent clauses. If you have a transition word between two independent clauses, you will have a comma after the transition word. If the subjects of both clauses are the same, a noun is used in the first clause and a pronoun is used in the second clause. 
we don't want to repeat the same um, noun that was used as subject in the independent clause in the first sentence. In the second sentence, because we already know who the independent clause is, in the second clause, we can replace that um, noun with a pronoun. This makes our writing a little bit more sophisticated and a little bit more concise because we don't need to repeat. That would be too primary. So let's move on to looking at adverb time clauses with special meaning. What are the similarities and differences between these sentences below? Take a look at them. So in number one, in Mexico, boys and girls are considered adults when they are 18 years old. Number two, in Kuwait, Honduras, and Singapore, boys and girls are considered adults only when they are 21 years old. Number three, in Iran, boys are considered adults even when they are 14 years old. In Saudi Arabia, boys are not considered adults until they are 14 years old. Number five, in Korea, boys and girls are considered children until they are 19 years old. And if we were in class, I would divide you into pairs and have you discuss the difference in meaning in these sentences and draw your attention to the adverbs in these sentences that indicate time and see if you could draw a conclusion about the difference in meaning in these sentences. So if we were to go back and look at them, we could see that in number one, uh, number one could mean that they're considered adults before the age of 18, but they're certainly adults at age 18. Boys and girls are considered adults when they enter the years, when they are 18 years old. So upon the event of becoming 18 years old, they are considered to be adults. And number two, the age of 21 is the beginning of adulthood. Let's look at the sentence again. In Kuwait, Honduras, and Singapore, boys and girls are considered adults only when they, re they are 21 years old, not before. Only when gives us that feeling of only when that event occurs and not before. Number three, boys are really young at 14, but they are considered adults anyway. Uh, in Iran, boys are considered adults even when they are 14 years old. So this even stress, stresses the fact that 14 is still a young age. Nevertheless, when they are 14, they are still considered to be adults, despite the fact that they are still young. In number four, boys are considered adults at the age of 14, but not before. So let's go back and look at the sentence. In Saudi Arabia, boys are not considered adults until they are at the age of 14 years old. So only when, once again, they achieve the, year, um, the age of 14 years old are they considered to be adults. And number five, boys and girls are thought of as children before they turn 19. The sentence was, in Korea, boys and girls are considered children until they are 19 years old. So once again, upon becoming um, 19, they are then considered to be adults. That's implied by the sentence and the word until. Now looking at adverb clauses of cause, effect, purpose, and manner. Here are some subordinating conjunctions that are um, connected with cause and effect, purpose, and manner. So you can see that um, teaching this is a little bit difficult because sometimes the subordinating conjunctions overlap and they have different functions. So we can see here that as functions both as cause and effect as well as manner. Basically, what you need to do is look at the sentence itself and look at the function of the sentence to determine whether 
the function of the sentence is cause and effect or manner. So then you can attribute a function to the subordinating conjunction. I'm not so concerned that you are able to describe the exact function of the subordinating con conjunction. What I'm more concerned about is the fact that you are able to identify the subordinating conjunction as introducing a um, subordinating clause. So just be aware that these are words that introduce subordinating clauses. And generally, these are adverb clauses. Now, as to which type of adverb clause they are, I'm not as worried. Um, that's a finer discretion of meaning that you can get to. Now, let's look at other structures that express cause, effect, purpose, and manner. So, do these sentences have different meanings? If not, what are the the differences sorry confusion there poorly written what are the differences so test taking strategy if not so that's kind of giving you a tip that they are not therefore they're not different so what are the differences let's look at number one some students find jobs because they lack money number two some students find jobs because of a lack of money. So a lack becomes a noun. Um, they lack money is they lack something, but because of something, because of a lack of money. Number three, some students find jobs due to a lack of money. Due to is similar to because. Number four, some students find jobs, comma, for they lack money. For is a coordinating conjunction. Remember we saw the acronym fanboys in class the other day. That helps you to remember all of the subordinating conjunctions. For is a subordinating conjunction. Remember that subordinating conjunctions connect two independent clauses. And we use a comma to, se to um, separate those two independent clauses. For shows a consequence or a result. It's similar to the word since or because. Um, it's very formal in this usage. Um, because they lack money. If you were to use because, you can see in the sentences above, you don't use a comma. However, when you use the coordinating conjunction as opposed to the subordinating conjunction, you do need a comma. Number five, some students lack money, comma, so they find jobs. Once again, so is a coordinating conjunction, which requires a comma. When we um, connect two independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction, Number six, some students lack money, semicolon, therefore, comma, they find jobs. Remember that with these transition words, they also connect to independent clauses, but the punctuation is different. We use a semicolon before the coordinating con conjunction and a comma after the word. Number seven, some students find jobs in order to get money. So once again, I ask you, do these sentences have different meanings? And if not, what are the differences? So as I indicated to you before with your test taking strategy, no, they do not have a difference in meaning. The meaning is basically the same among all of those sentences. The difference is in the types of connectors that are used to connect these clauses. And based on the types of connectors, we are required to use different types of um, punctuation. So in number one is a complex sentence. Remember that complex sentence is uh, independent clause plus dependent clause. So the dependent clause is because they lack money. The independent clause is some students find jobs. Remember that when the dependent clause comes second, there is no comma. If we had the dependent clause first, because they lack money, 
comma, some students find jobs, then yes, we would have a comma. So please remember, there is no comma when the dependent clause comes first. This is a very, very common mistake. You will see this frequently, even in academic writing. People put a comma before because, and it is wrong. Number two, examples two and three are simple sentences. Remember, a simple sentence just has subject, verb, object, if required. The object being if there is a transitive verb. Because of and due to introduce noun phrases. So let's go back and look at numbers two and three. Some students find job, jobs because of a lack of money. A lack of money is a noun phrase. Money is the noun. A lack of is a quantifier showing us how much money. So this is a um, quantifier. Number three. Some students find jobs due to a lack of money. So basically in this number three, due to is the same as because a lack of money is also a, deep, um, a noun phrase. Remember that in noun phrases, we have a noun and we may have other words such as adjectives or quantifiers. Examples four, five, and six are compound sentences joined with coordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs. So remember that compound sentences are, are um, independent clauses plus dependent clauses. So let's look at four, five, and six. Uh, some students find jobs. That's an independent clause. For they lack money is a dependent clause. So that is connected with a coordinating conjunction. Some students lack money, comma, so they find jobs. So they find jobs, so is the coordinating conjunction. Number six, some students lack money, semicolon, therefore, they find jobs. We have two independent clauses connected by the coordinating conjunction or transition word, therefore. Number seven is a simple sentence. In order to means purpose and introduces a noun phrase. Let's look at it again. Um, some students find jobs in order to get money. Finally, looking at the point of register. Remember, register is similar to understanding communicative competence. Which type of sentence should you use in which type of context? So we typically use because as a conjunction in complex sentences to express the reason for something. So that an, introduces an adverbial clause, a clause that introduces reason. However, formal academic writing often uses comma plus for as a conjunction in a compound sentence to express the same idea. I just mentioned this. So for is a coordinating conjunction. It's not a... Um, subordinator in that it introduces two independent clauses. However, it still has the same meaning showing result or, um, or reason. And that's the function of for. It's similar to as because, but with before you require a comma, whereas with because you do not because they have different rules. So that wraps up my explanation of um, Schmidt chapter 10. Please let me know if you have any questions about specific answers to questions that you had for the exercises for this chapter. And I hope that you are enjoying learning a deeper understanding of grammar. As I mentioned in the very first class, it's always important to revisit this content to keep yourself up to date and feeling confident about um, grammar constructs and how to teach them. So I look forward to seeing you again next week. And until then, uh, have a great time working on your uh, peer analysis assignment. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.